Our first guest is an actor who will amaze us by walking down those stairs over there because that is something you will never see him do in his hit show. He's the king of the remote control, the head of the royal family, Mr. Ricky Tomlinson. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, come and sit down. Thank you very much indeed, sir. You all right? Sound. Yeah. It's a long way, isn't it? Here you go. That's the old, that's the Real McCoy, isn't it? I hope so, yeah. Oh, a little yeah. taste. Yeah. Have some? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Saints, please, mild. <laughs> oh. oh, well done. Uh, you're not from Tesco's, are you? So, uh, you're going to have about 18 cases of that come to your, uh, your house, hopefully. Oh, yes, I hope so. I love it, honestly. I go really? to all these posh dudes and they have champagne and white wine and all them drinks with the funny little umbrellas in uh, And they think I'm bonkers because I take my own, you know. There you go. <laughs> now, I've got some interesting little trivia on here, Ricky. Here we go. Now, uh, you're a fan of classical music. Yeah, your favourite yeah. composers are Brahms and Mozart. Brahms and Liszt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After a few things with Miles. <laughs> And, uh, you once met Robert De Niro, but oh. you didn't recognise him. I said to him, uh, are you in the business? <laughs> <laughs> You're a fan? Uh, oh, no, I've done that bit. Here we go, we've got some other stuff here. Um, <laughs> That's not a bad one out of two. <laughs> <laughs> My ass! My ass! <laughs> when you film in the Royal Family, which takes six weeks, you don't wash your hair or your clothes. No, not at all. Are you, are you, are you working at the moment? No. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm, so, I'm modelling these for the catalogue. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm, if you're playing a slab, I don't say you can go into work and put on no. really pristine stuff. And, and I've got a wonderful dresser called David, and he had hair like me when he started. He's baldy now because I won't let him wash anything. I just put it in the corner, and it's, yeah. and it's there. Yeah. And I just go, and it comes to me. <laughs> Get out and do the business. Jim Royal, he is a slob. You mentioned he's yeah. tight. Yeah. He's very tight. Right. Doesn't like his mother in law. Now, I love this. Caroline O'Hearn, Lee, when she wrote this, had you in mind. Yeah. So, she, uh, she didn't want to smack her? No! No, no I love her to pieces. Yeah. She's like my own little girl. She's my own little girl. She's like Caroline. She's small, blonde, and very dainty and petite, but unlike Caroline, she, she doesn't drink. <laughs> So why do you think it is, uh, we not, why is it so successful? I don't know, because everyone can see a little bit of themselves in it, can't they? I mean, yeah. it is difficult for me to get into character, because as you know, I'm more of a sex symbol in the... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I just think everyone can see a little bit. I mean, I am like Jim Royal. There's only me and Reese at home. And, mm. and when, when the phone bill comes and she says the phone, and I say, how much? And she says, 200... I say, wow, how much? Who's <laughs> been... And I go through every number, mm. and they're all mine. <laughs> but I still moan. You've got a, a new sitcom which you've written, Tomo, Dick and Harry. Yeah, yeah. It's just... a family show, so just talk about Tomo and Harry. Yeah, about the other, leave, leave Dick alone. And, and, uh... <laughs> well, it's, it's just basically about what I used to, I used to go to work Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. then come on Friday night and put the old dinner jacket on and go to the clubs and uh. do a little bit of entertaining, anything, just scratching really, to, uh. to feed the kids, yeah. Clubs? There must be oh some great God. stories about it. I, I worked at all the clubs no one else had worked. I had a little All around Liverpool? Oh, all around right, the dock area, because that's where oh. we were from. Mm. And there was one club, no one had worked this club, it was called the Colombo Club in Seal Street. And the guy who owned it, it's, he drives a little black taxi now in Liverpool. Ex-professional boxer, little tiny, it must have been a flyweight, or a bantamweight, named Tony Gallagher. And he had this club, and we used to play in the pub in the afternoon, and the pubs used to shut at two o'clock in them days. So we'd all get in the car, me and Tony Scoggle, who played Matty in Brookside, and two other guys, put all the gear in the van and shoot down to the Colombo, set up and then play there from three till five. Mm. And, and it was full of gangsters, all the gangsters, all, all the boys like that, it was mainly stag. And I could get up and do anything with this crowd and they were wonderful. But one day, we're playing, and as I say, Tony was on, on the bass and I'm out front doing something, and a shotgun comes through the letterbox. <laughs> and the, both barrels go off. <laughs> So everyone thought it was for them, because they were all little semi-villains. Mm. So everyone dived on the floor. So I'm on the back of the stage, under the amplifier, like that. 
and I'll never forget this as long as I'm looking down the club and the smoke is rising and little Tony Gallagher is behind the bar at the bottom end and he vaulted over the bar and he run up the club and jumped on the stage and got hold of the microphone and he said that's it shotguns in the club is there in future no one gets in unless they've got a tie on <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, now, when uh, when we asked you on the show, we should uh, would you do a bit of banjo, and uh, I think you very kindly agreed. And we've got a we've got a little banjo here that you've never seen before, have you? So, uh, well, so I hope it's tuned to what I do. Oh, well, I have play. a little go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. This is a banjo. Oh, it's a cracker! That is, is it? I don't know if it'll be tuned up. Though. I, I, I play a bit of a special tune and yeah. see, kid. Oh, who'd you that spot, huh? Yeah, good Except for that fifth string, can we take that off? Yeah. But there you go, we love it. We'll this is, I'd like to sing this little song, it's called... I used to kiss it on the lips, uh -huh. but it's all over now. If you don't behave yourself, I'll play another one. <laughs> that is, is, I mean, it must be very relaxing. Is that how you relax with the, you know, your banjo? I, mean, I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. And, and, and in Liverpool, there's probably the two best banjo players in, in the country. Really? Oh, a fella called John Cordwell. Mm. And he's absolutely unbelievable. I just go and sit in and, and do, a, you know, a couple of little songs with him. But I, I love music. I love, uh, mm. I, I love all music, you know. Yeah. I wish I could play better, but there you go. Anything else you want to say before you go? I, I must tell him the story. I used go, to have, oh, if you've got another good oh, story, yeah, 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 go for it. I used to have a casting agency in Liverpool. A, called, a what? A casting agency mm. before I got into the you know. Yeah. I heard that he was setting up Brookside, you see, and I thought, oh, get a little casting agency and get a little bit of work. It was all about getting work for yourself. Mm. And, uh, the lads would come in, I'd say, there's a couple of jobs wanted here, a couple of extras, and I'd go with them, and, and we'd have a... And there was a fella called Jackie Hamilton, who's a... He's, he's a comic in Liverpool, and he's the nicest fella you could ever wish to meet in your life. And uh, I said, there's a little job going here, Jackie, uh, playing um, British prisoners of war, you know, captured during the war. And he said, oh... And it was right in the middle of winter, and it was up in uh, Nottingham. And they used to travel every day on the coach, you know. But they got a few weeks' work out of it, so they were all making a nice few quid. And Jackie would keep everyone entertained on the set, you know, all dressed up as prisoners of war and all like that. When it comes to the last day, the director said, now listen, fellas, he said, you've been marvellous. He said, you've been absolutely wonderful. He said, but tomorrow, he said, I only want 20 extras. He said, because I'm going to do close-ups, and I'm going to give one or two of you a little line to say. But you know the game, it's extra money, you see, oh, so thanks. they were all waiting. So he went to have you, you, you. Came to Jackie Hamilton, he went, <laughs> you, you. So... Jackie didn't. So he walked over to Jackie and he said, Jackie, look, I'm awful sorry. He said, you've kept ent everyone entertained right through the winter, through the snow and the hail. He said, you've kept everyone's spirits up. He said, but these are close-ups, he said. And you're all playing prisoners of war. He said, and you're supposed to be thin and skinny and wretched. He said, you're big and fat. You've got a big red nose and you smell of whiskey. <laughs> and Jackie said, oh, no, I only got captured yesterday. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I loved him, yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> your appreciation, please, for Mr. Ricky Tomlinson. Here you go, Chief. Are you ready? Here we go.